What's up guys, today we're going to be going over these 2005 Chevy Duramax door panels we just finished up. We got six six and a halfs in the front door panels with three tweeters and in the rear panels we got four six and a halfs and two tweeters. We're going to go through the whole process start to finish on these door panels so let's get into it. As always on the project, first step, taking everything apart doing a tear down these door panels are pretty stock a little modification from the customer before bringing it to us but pretty blank slate to start with which is always very nice take door panels off take the speakers out we're gonna be reusing this there's gonna be all DS 18 speakers throughout got all DS 18 stuff in this whole build so the first thing I wanted to do with these door panels is get this handle raised up off the factory height about an inch and a half two inches I was able to get an inch what I did was I put some nut certs in the door as you can see secured that wood panel and I secured the handle to that panel I had to also make some new door mechanism pulls the metal parts of them had to be replaced really just for speaker clearance more so than anything still worked with the raising the height of the handle but definitely wanted to make sure we had a bunch of magnet clearance in the back and nothing was going to get in the way once we uh, got the speakers in there Next thing I'm doing is cutting up these factory panels. I want to cut as little away as possible, but I know I want to fit a lot of speakers on these door panels. So I did end up cutting quite a bit. Try to retain as many factory clips and connections as possible on the door panels. We have uh, the handles to deal with. There's also a few uh, window motors that are definitely going to be an issue in the way. So got to make sure you cut enough away the door. You're going to add enough baffle for your speakers to uh, actually fit on there. So got that cut out got the wood starting of a wood baffle figured out basically just tracing the hole that I cut out on the door panel itself uh, originally I was going to kind of cut a hole out and notch my handle in the panel but I kind of decided to change that up change the baffle out and um, right now I'm just kind of getting some different speaker configurations figured out normally you want to have your tweeters up higher and your mid speakers lower Obviously having speakers towards the rear is never the best idea, but when you're trying to fit this many speakers on one plane, that's about the best thing you're going to be able to do. But I definitely try to make sure my tweeters are always more in a higher position than my mid speakers. So after we get that baffle piece cut, that kind of gives me my max outside dimensions of how big I can make this panel. I'm going to make a ring that's going to fit inside the plastic of the door panel. That's, that's what's going to mount to the plastic and the baffle itself is gonna to mount to the metal of the truck's door panel. So I made myself a trim ring that will go around the baffle that will hold the speakers. Uh, this is gonna be stack fab, it's quite a few different layers. I basically wanna make sure it will almost touch the metal of the truck. Now I do this to make sure when I'm setting my baffle in there that I have enough clearance for speakers and I'm not gonna be messing around trying to figure out how far I need to mount that thing. One thing you're definitely going to notice is how many times I took these doors in and out of this truck. Uh, you definitely want to test fit, test fit, test fit. You definitely uh, want to make sure all the way through everything you do, every layer you add, you're testing it again from, from uh, this stage here, which is wood. Next, we're going to do the foam, fiberglass. We're going to keep just test fitting this thing. Uh, the biggest issue with door panels, I find, is just getting them to fit alone. You got the dash up there. You got the the bottom sill panel, the seats itself. So you wanna make sure every time you make a change in the panels, I always like to bring it back to the truck and test fit it because nothing is worse than uh, building it all the way through and realizing you have to make modifications afterwards, which is sometimes, uh, well, always difficult, sometimes nearly impossible. Here's a few shots of me fitting this handle with the door panel. Like I mentioned, I had to modify that metal bar that opens and closes the door really just opens it when you use the handle itself i wanted to had to make some bends so i picked up some uh some stock rod from the local hardware store and that was basically uh very simple to bend just use some pliers as you see here coming up got fancy here made my own uh little handle rods i guess you can call them now that I have the handle location figured out, I want to go ahead and make sure that that factory cover is going to fit over the handle really well. Uh, 
not not to toot my own horn, but I definitely take some specific pride in how I did this. Maybe not the exact procedure, but just how it turned out overall. I wanted to make sure that little cover plate that uh, goes on after, I wanted to make sure I retain that. I thought that would look really good and actually make the panel look a lot more factory once it's all finished. Or as factory as you can make six, six and a half, and three tweeters in your door work. Now just to avoid the hassle of messing with the speakers, I went ahead and cut myself some mock-up speakers. This represents the size of the speakers and the tweeters, just seeing where everything lines up. Want to make sure I avoid the handle, avoid those window uh, motors there. Definitely don't want any magnets hitting that stuff. You can always cut the factory metal. Now that isn't preferred, but easy to cut the factory metal, really hard to move a, uh, a window motor. Next to impossible, if you ask me. Definitely not worth the uh, effort if you can avoid it in proper planning. Now we're cutting out these baffles using the circle jig. I'm trying to remember, can't remember the name of this circle jig exactly, but I got my uh, Bosch router here. Now I'm cutting out the flush mounts first. This isn't a full through flush mount, and that's why you'll notice I have these layers screwed together. I don't glue this until the very final step once I have the holes all the way through, but this is the flush mount process. I only did about a half inch recess because I wanted there to be enough meat in the wood when I put the speakers in and screw them in, those screws will actually have enough to bite onto. And that's one problem you see, especially in vehicles that have a lot of base like this truck. The speakers don't have enough wood to bite onto when you're screwing them down. Eventually they're gonna fall out or shake loose. Now, if you haven't seen this two-part foam yet, here's your introduction. This is two-part flotation foam. It's normally used in boats, but uh, John Kent tipped me off a lot of uh, door fabricators told me about this two-part foam and this stuff is actually I mean it is a game changer I wish I would have uh, realized this stuff from the very start this is eight pound foam that I'm using and what you've seen I was taping off the outside of my door so when I pour my foam from the back side it doesn't drip everywhere and I don't waste a bunch of foam you're probably likely gonna have some holes through it the stuff comes out very fine liquid uh, one thing I would definitely recommend mix 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 very thoroughly as you can see here, it pours in as a liquid and it starts to slowly rise. If you don't mix this stuff good enough, it's either not going to rise or when it does rise, it's not going to be as dense as it should be and it's going to remain kind of soft and foamy. This eight pound foam is actually really hard. I mean, I wouldn't say it's hard as a rock, but very close so. And it's very lightweight for how strong it is as well. These door panels are definitely bulletproof. This foam is like $130, $145 for two gallons, so you're definitely going to see me pour in multiple batches. I want to try to waste as little as possible. You can see the foam spill over. That's just purely waste right there. Honestly, I kind of changed up my method on the second, third, and fourth door, so I didn't want to have all that, uh, that foam over, basically, because I'm just going to have to trim that anyway, and it's wasted material at the end of the day. Got it all trimmed up with the... Uh, multi-tool for the back so I can get it nice and straight. The front I used my uh, Milwaukee like DA little grinder and again you're gonna see me put these doors in this truck many 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 times again you want to make sure you're test fitting through the entire process even if you think it's gonna fit test it just make sure right here I'm building myself up a little perimeter on the outside of the door panel where I'm gonna be pouring the foam in there you can use cardboard. I have cardboard. What I decided to use was some thicker um, like construction paper. It's what you use for protecting a floor when you're doing a remodel. Fold that up a few times on itself and then tape that around the perimeter. Just felt that would work a little bit easier than the cardboard and definitely bend a little bit better. I feel like I could have probably picked a, uh, a better way to do this as you'll see in some sooner steps like right here when I put the tape on the front of the door itself I actually shaped it more towards the shape I wanted to end up with and this actually turned out to be a much better method it had a lot less waste and it turned out to be the right shape the first time just with a little extra added foam in the end now you're probably gonna notice in these next steps the factory vinyl has been stripped from the doors I didn't get any videos or pictures of that process because honestly it's an ungodly messy process I basically just use a wire wheel on my drill and go to town on this stuff. It is it is on there really well. You could probably get away with leaving it, and I did leave it behind the other parts of the door panel that I've already attached to the factory panel, but 
I want to fiberglass resin and bondo over the top of the unexposed or the exposed parts now just to kind of add some rigidity to the door and I really didn't want to try to stick that over the factory final Fac factory vinyl factory vinyl there we go I, I really stumbling over my words really hard right there now I'm gonna keep saying it again and again test fit test fit test fit um, I might have a little paranoia because I've definitely built a, a set of door panels in the past that didn't fit very well and I had to modify them afterwards which was a huge bummer but also kind of excited about these things so I wanted to uh, I mean, really, every time I finished the process, I was like, oh, I want to see what they look like on the truck now. So slapped them back on there, just making sure I test everything, see how everything lines up too. Because really, with this foam, and once you start doing fiberglass, you're going to have a heck of a time doing any sort of modifications. But here they are with the baffles in there. Things definitely look really good. I'm excited at this point for sure. This is like the first time I sent the customer some pictures too, and he was definitely pumped on it. Before this, he kind of had no clue. Um, where I was going with these door panels or exactly what I was doing. Thankfully, he's a he's a cool customer along with most of my customers. They kind of give me a little bit of freedom to uh, do whatever I want. It's more so, hey, here's I want this done, um, figure it out. And I kind of go to town and use my creativity on this. Here's a little better shot here, a little video through the process of how these things look as you go. Again, this is eight part, not eight part, two parts, eight pound flotation foam I'm using on the outside of these and I'm basically pouring it letting it expand using my grinder to shape it up sander a few little die grinder tools that I have definitely a, a lot of work but it does sand away fairly easy and now comes the itchy process we're gonna start fiberglassing these things again if you don't see fiberglass in your builders process he's not building your door panels right got fiberglass on the whole thing and I'm gonna put one or two layers across the whole door panel now I wanted to make sure I took away that little detail they have above the armrest, that little inlay spot. I just thought it would look better flat overall. Some fiberglass in the whole panel, and I like to do small batches. I'm not trying to achieve fiberglassing the whole door at one time because you're going to waste resin. You're not going to get your fiberglass mat as um, soaked with resin if you're trying to rush through the process. Here we got some sanding done. These things, definitely a pain if you've ever sanded fiberglass. You know the deal with this, but grinder, some DA grinder, little die tools, and uh, lots and lots and lots of hours. I, I lost track on how many hours I had in these things, but definitely an insane amount of work. Now we're going to get some Bondo on these things. You're going to see the color of this Bondo change throughout the process. Uh, normally, I go to my body shop. They were closed. I was trying to get this done on the weekend, so searched through all the local stores. Finally found some uh, Bondo Professional, the 3M stuff had a whole headache with that it looked like it's been sitting on the shelf for a year and a half there's dry dry chunks and everything so you will see some change between red and blue also there will be some minor changes in the color consistency just depending on how much uh, hardener I use in each specific layer sanding up some fiberglass again there is a lot and lot of labor time sanding this fiberglass stuff up and now on to these rear doors. Basically the same process again. I took the cutout that I had on the panel, traced it onto a board, cut that out, made myself a trim ring for my baffle to fit within. Because again, I want to mount the trim ring to the panel. I want to mount the baffle, which is going to hold the speaker weight to this metal of the door. I'm going to be using threaded inserts to attach all this stuff. So these door panels aren't going to be going anywhere after that. So we got the baffle, we're cutting them out with the speaker holes. Got the circle jig here. Again, I'm doing the flush mount first because I'm not doing a full through flush mount. This is like a half inch flush mount instead of the three quarter flush mount. Just again, I want to make sure that there's enough wood there for the screws to bite really good. You're not going to have any issues over time with losing grip or just needing to fill in holes from mounting on mounting speakers if ever that were a case. And same as the front doors with the back doors, we're going to test fit, test fit, test fit. We're taking these. Uh, checking these mounting rings right now we have to watch out for this these window motors definitely gave us some clearance issues we got the baffles laid out right here with all the speakers cut out these definitely look really cool this is definitely going to be some really loud doors 26 and a half 10 tweeters definitely going to be nice right here we got the back doors again i changed up the process like i said i ended up taping the complete outside of the front of the door 
as close to the shape as what I envisioned them to be. So when I pour my foam in, I'm wasting as little foam as I have to. Now again, you see there is some foam overlap, but you could trim that off. We got the trim door right here after I've grinded and sanded a little bit. These things definitely looking real nice. You can see on the top, they definitely got some more foam we're gonna have to pour in, which we'll take care of in a later step. But again, test fit, test fit, test fit. You don't wanna make sure these fit right on the final step. You wanna make sure they fit right all the way through. So here's another door right here. You can see the foam and kind of the trimming process as I go through. Definitely a big mess. You can see that little uh, handle insert piece is just buried in the foam. Got the back of the doors filled with the foam too. Again, this is eight pound, two part flotation foam. This stuff is super hard, super dense. For the weight, it is very strong as well. Definitely a, a bulletproof door for sure. More foam trimming and fiberglass work. Wanted to make sure I had these things really strong, strong as possible. They're not only gonna be holding a lot of weight in speakers, but they are in a pretty loud build in itself. So there's gonna be a lot of vibration in this truck always and constantly when playing the music so got some fiberglass work on here some more bondo laid down and again like i said you're gonna see some variations in colors like you're gonna see coming up when i switch to uh, some blue and really that's just gonna be a difference in hardener i did end up picking up midway through the process some some body filler from my body local body shop right here we got these uh handles and the switch panels i wanted to make sure the place where they meet up is a really nice crisp line. So what I did was I taped the handle, taped the switch panel, and I back kind of pushed in that Bondo in that crack. And uh, once I take that off, I'll make sure I sand in a clearance for my vinyl when I wrap it and it's all finished up. Here we got some Bondo sanded up. Now this is like the first initial sanding process. This is just gonna be getting the bulk of the Bondo off. Gonna be going quite a few different steps with bondo sanding bondo sanding as you're gonna see got that reveal there that handle but a little rough so we're gonna keep touching it up got that little angle right there curve I wanted to modify a little bit as well just going through little by little making sure you're making little modifications filling pinholes flat spots anything you're gonna see that uh, you're gonna want to fix you're gonna want to fix it now and just because you're doing wrapping these doors with vinyl does not mean you don't have to have nearly perfect body work because you will see all those things in the end process We've got some grill work here and then back onto these door panels more sanding it seems like the sanding process was never ending and it definitely was right here I sprayed these things with blue as a guide coat when I was block sanding these out I'm gonna switch back and forth between sanding and working on these grills to be honest this the sanding process is kind of the make or break process of sometimes what will make you want to quit even working on the project altogether because you're just going to sand think you're good go over it one more time find something else to do right here i'm working on these little insert templates now these grills i wanted to add some plexiglass inserts in them so i wanted to make some wood templates so I wasn't trying to jigsaw out my plexiglass pieces you want to be those those to be as close to perfect as possible got some more block sanding going on now again I'm using that blue as a guide coat and you can see as you sand you want to make sure you sand with hard blocks or at least a decently hard block um, you difference between smooth and flat is very big a door panel can be smooth sure feel smooth to the hand but that doesn't mean it's gonna be flat when you've wrapped this in vinyl especially with black in my opinion uh, those waves in the door panel can be very obvious so I even made a uh, custom sanding block I'm using the Diablo sandpaper on this stuff kind of my preference and it's uh, locally accessible at Home Depot I've just really kind of found it to be really the best sandpaper I've used personal experience here we got these plexiglass inserts cut out now these are cut out of a uh, half inch acrylic and I'm gonna put a chamfer on the outside and a rabbit on the inside of these things to uh, fit the LEDs in. This is just the first process. These things definitely took a lot of sanding. I want to say I have probably close to 16 hours in these pieces alone. These are all cut by hand again. I don't have a CNC in my shop so definitely a, uh, a long long process. Just kind of getting a vibe of how these things are going to look on there. Definitely super happy. Went with the smoke look. I didn't want to keep them clear. I wanted to kind of 
smoke them or haze them up. So what I did was took some 220 sandpaper, sanded the back of them, back and front with my orbital sander. Now I did that before I routered the detail on the front or the rabbit in the back. I can always go through and hand sand later, but might as well knock out some, some good surface area with the palm sander while you can. And again, I went back and forth between sanding and working on these grills. Not only was that more so to keep busy while maybe Bondo is drying, but also to kind of keep myself sane, because like I said, the sanding can definitely be the make or break process. And uh, you don't want to cut any corners of this process. You already spent so much time making sure you got the proper layout. You built the door nice and strong. You know, you gave it some nice visual details. You definitely don't want to go short on your sanding because that's going to definitely set apart a good door panel from a bad door panel. Even a basic looking door panel that is sanded properly and nice and flat is going to look so much better than a high, high detail fancy panel that's sanded lazily and looks uh, wavy in the final detail. Again, test fit, test fit, test fit. I, uh, I practice what I preach, definitely. I don't just say it, I do it. I, I keep wanting to test these things. Definitely around, also around the dash, where you meet the door and the dash, that can definitely be a problem area. Even adding on a layer of vinyl can make the difference between it scraping and not scraping. So I'm just keep putting these things in here, testing them out, back seats, front seats. I wanna make sure those clear all good. Not only clear, I kinda wanna make sure they're comfortable to sit in. Obviously a door panel with this many speakers, you're gonna to have to have it sitting out from the door a little bit, but I wanted to make sure that it's still going to be comfortable, but also not look goofy as well. That's why I spent a lot of time with the uh, initial trim ring and the baffle, trimming those doors out, making sure they fit in there really good. Showing off the finished product after sanding, kind of before vinyl. There's still a little bit of a modifications I gotta make where the, uh, the lock trim goes in the door panel. I want to make sure that's nice and clean so do a little more bono after this but basically these are in a finished process. Uh, didn't get much of the wrapping unfortunately as usual the wrapping process is pretty hectic and uh, not only do you need three hands most times it's a process where you can't really take too many breaks in between because you got glue drying but also you want to make sure the stuff is tacking you're using a heat gun. Big a lot, a lot of process it's a a process where it's just very hard to film to be honest with you got this back door here we're going to transition onto the door panel trim grills grill plates whatever you'd like to call them got them wrapped in the black with the plexiglass inserts now these are going to have leds in them later on we're going to wait until the customer gets the other speakers he has to buy 26 and a half and 10 tweeters he has a few here and there but big purchase so it's going to take a little bit of time we figured we'd hold off on the LEDs, at least get them in the truck and uh, get this thing playing some sort of music for him to roll around in. I'm definitely very happy with how these grills turned out. Definitely phenomenal finish in the end. A lot of work. Like I said, I had many, 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 many hours just in those plexiglass pieces alone. Probably close to an hour and a half to wrap each grill insert as well, just because you have those cutouts, so many bends and and uh, angles you have to kind of trim around, bend, heat gun. Here they are finished up. We got the driver or passenger front door. These things came out better than I ever could have expected to be honest. Also another process I missed was spraying the baffles in bed liner. Again, just trying to get this project over with to be honest with you. Um, so got a little lazy on the filming stage and the picture process towards the end, but definitely made sure I got some nice finished pictures of these doors definitely turned out really well the handle trim panel the grills the the wrap on these things i'm definitely impressed with myself even on how well i was able to wrap these things and again we're gonna have six six and a halfs and three tweeters in the front doors and four six and a halfs two tweeters in the rear doors kind of going with a two to one ratio speaker to tweeter give it a good healthy mix you don't want too much tweeter but you definitely don't want too little and those super tweeters they can get loud on very little power so you don't need to go crazy with those again super happy with how these things turned out i uh i was just, i was pleased the customer was super happy with them everything uh lines up really nicely fits don't hit anything 
These are going to be all DS18 speakers all the way through, just to match the whole build. He already has the center console with two DS18 Hooligan 15s we got in there. Now we've basically finished up the whole interior with these uh, these sweet door panels. But again, they're going to be six six and a halfs on the front, three tweeters, and four six and a halfs on the rear, two tweeters, all DS18. We're going to be the uh, EXL Pro six and a halfs. I want to say. Might not be uh, saying that exactly correctly with these so many different model numbers of uh, different speakers out there, but these things are all finished up. Aside from a few more speakers, we got to put in there and the LEDs. Super excited to show you guys these things with the LEDs. Probably do a video in itself of the doors when they have the LEDs and the whole build. Since I really haven't even been able to show off this full build. Um, everything we do in here we're both super busy so it's kind of like finish up a project and we don't have any time to really record in the end or get any videos but the center console is super nasty two ds18 hooligan 15s this thing's loud haven't had it metered yet but i know it does hair tricks i want to say i haven't had it metered the customer hasn't had it metered unfortunately this uh this beautiful truck does not belong to me but fortunately the owner decided to bring this thing to me and let me do my magic on it so it's basically got a full custom loose build all the way through center console door panels we did some amp racks in the back but this thing is all finished up and again i am super happy with this uh final product thank you guys so much for watching if you've watched this far in this video i know it's been a long one make sure you comment 1728 down below let me know you've watched this whole video if you haven't already like subscribe comment, share, do all that good stuff, and I'll see you on the next video.